Larry. I see that this has been running around Las Vegas already. It has, yeah. So Sunday night, around four or five in the morning, we did a full photo shoot with Speed Hunters, and it came out awesome. It was a really cool shoot um, at the Plaza Hotel, which coincidentally enough, I didn't realize, is the, the hotel they used in Back to the Future 2 for the Biff Hotel. What I is had no the idea. chance of that? I had no idea. <laughs> that is incredible. Yeah, so Ben from Speed Hunters let me know that. I even know. So, yeah, yeah okay. it was awesome. So then this car, when I first saw it, I was just so blown away. I mean, this has been a long time coming. It huh? has, it has. Well, so, like, uh, how long has the process been for this? 2020 I bought the car, and then we brought it in 21 yeah. with the version one body kit, which was nowhere near what me and Kaiza originally envisioned. And now that we've come back in 23, this is now the final version two body kit built by my buddy Tyler at Fortune Auto Design. Completely 3D printed the body kit. We made it exactly the way we wanted to. And we weren't like crazy restricted by the confines of COVID. So now we were able to build the car the way we wanted to. So then the question is why the DeLorean? DeLorean is a total bucket list car for me. I've wanted one since I was eight years old. I just love these cars and it's just, coincidental that I build cars for a living, so when I decided to build one for my own, really no other car came to mind than the DeLorean. Is it one of those things where, I don't know if you had a chance to own a stock one? I did. And drive one? Actually, I do now. So then what, what is the, to you, is it like a disappointment thing, or it, did you want to just make it better, or do you like the stock version as well as a, like a super heavily modified version? That's I not like the, the same stock thing. version better. Really? <laughs> yeah. The, the heavily modified version has its positives, but it's so wild and it's so crazy that you can't drive this car. You know, I mean, I, when I drove it down the street Sunday night was the first time I've driven it more than four blocks. And it was a monster. Like it, I was scared the whole time that something was gonna happen to it. So I'm building another one right now that's gonna be just a standard V8 probably the same body kit, but it's gonna be on coilovers and it's gonna be something I can drive. <laughs> if you if you build something and it doesn't make your armpit sweaty while you're driving it, maybe you did something wrong. I think so. I But I think you really executed it perfectly. It looks amazing. To start out with a car that has this much lore and aura and history, yeah. I mean, it, everybody has a DeLorean story, right? Whether watching it on the movie, in the movies, yeah. or seeing it out on the street. If you're a car person, you know this car. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's iconic. But what you have done, like how different is this versus the Kaiza rendition? This version is pretty much one-to-one. -one. So he put his blessing on it when he finally saw it on Sunday, and he's like, we nailed it. It's great. So, you know, the new version is sharper, just like he originally designed. It's got these reliefs now. The other one did not. And this one's actually 50 millimeters narrower. So I can, it, it was just so wide before and crazy that it was just like an overreach of what we should have done. Now it's more of like an OEM plus, which is what we wanted in the first place. See, the cool thing that I like about Kaiza's renderings, you technically can build most of them. Yeah. And his job as a car enthusiast is to build these cars and photograph them in the digital world. 100%. And then there's people like yourself and me <laughs> who we're, we're really lucky to be able to photograph in the real world. Yeah. Of course, it's a lot more challenging, yeah. um, but it's really cool that we always have this opportunity yeah. to be able to see something in the digital world first and then see it on the SEMA show floor yeah. in 3D. The creation is here. So then what else in terms of body? Like all of this stuff is 3D printed? This is 3D printed. The front lip is 3D printed, the side skirts, rear bumper. The headlight buckets are 3D printed, and then these are acrylic glass. And these headlights were actually built and designed 100% off of his rendering. I was kind of obsessive over making sure that everything on the car was exact to what he had. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people have made correlations to A86s. Yeah. And it actually, I mean, it's from the 80s. A lot of those cars looked similar back then. So for it to look kind of like a Trueno, it, it, it still kind of holds true. <laughs> so then this is 3D printed too? Yep. But how did you bond this together? It's just a bunch of so different... So you can see where one crack is uh -huh. forming, and that's only because I was rushed. So this Got was segmented it. in one foot sections. Wow. Glued together, we fiberglassed the whole back of it, and then we skim coated over the plastic, primed it, and then painted it. 
So what was the condition like for this vehicle when you first got it? So I bought this car from a company out of Beverly Hills, California, and they specialize in barn finds. So this car actually was T-boned on the driver's side, so it needed a door, it needed a rear quarter panel, and if you could see, there's a little red specks right in here. Mm -hmm. The whole car was painted red. Really? Yeah. Okay. So back in the 80s, when the company went under and dealers were stuck with these cars, no one wanted a raw metal car, so they started painting them. So this car was painted red to try to move it faster. So there that, are black, white, and red DeLoreans that exist in the world. That doesn't make any sense. Well, it's weird because this car was 30 years late because yeah. it's so cool now, but right. back in the 80s, everyone's like, why is it not painted? Yeah, but that's, <laughs> that's the thing is um, that's how these iconic cars come, just come to life because yeah. at the time when they were new, nobody bought them. No. And then now, look at this thing. It's just- It's a resurgence. It's so cool. I mean, the retro look, the feel, and it just looks so fast from the factory, but obviously it wasn't. But you've obviously fixed that. A little in bit. In a grand way. Yeah, I mean, the initial concept that me and Kaiza kind of came up with was, what if they built an IMSA race car? And we and actually found like a rendering from 83 or 82 mm -hmm. where they did an IMSA car and it looked similar to this. So we try to keep the boxy flares, keep the mechanicalness of the this engine bay. This is so bay. cool. This is, well, I think this is my favorite part right here. Yeah, the dry yeah. carbon. It's yeah. just so cool. I mean, this opening. Yeah, originally there's glass there. Yeah, and then so you had to make like a glass thing back there or did no, you No, this is original. Oh, that's original. Yep. So the, but there is also glass here. Yeah. But you took that out. So it's very strange the way they built the car. So the louver system was just a fascia and then when you pop the louver system on an original DeLorean, mm -hmm. there was another deck lid inside of here. Got with it. Vents that go this way. And then this whole space is just not used. It's very strange. Like you can't let luggage over there. It's just like a double I don't know, it's kind of strange to explain what it is. So then what are we looking at in terms of power plant? This is a 5.3 liter all aluminum block Gen 4 LS with individual throttle bodies, custom made 6061 plenums with all vibrant titanium cold side, vibrant HD clamps, Haltech Nexus R5 for the fuel management system. And then we use vibrant stainless steel and titanium for the hot side of the exhaust system as well. And these are vibrant cores. This is really neat right here. So where does it actually get the air from? So these pontoons are hollow. Oh, okay. So inside the wheel well are slots. Uh -huh. So when the car is rolling. Oh, it actually feeds air into it. Feeds it feeds air in, just like an old IMSA car. So then where is the intake then? So the intakes are down here on the turbo. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I, you know, I missed this whole thing. <laughs> There's a I whole... didn't even look at this. Yeah, it's twin wow, turbo. Wow, okay, so twin turbo. So because of packaging, you couldn't put everything up no. near, near the engine, in the engine bay. Yeah. This almost looks like a Porsche setup here. That's huh? exactly what I yeah. robbed it from. Oh, okay. The old even air-cooled the, 911s. Even the exhaust. Yep, same is, thing. Is that. And then these are the wastegate dumps. Uh huh. So the wastegates are tucked behind there. And then this whole exhaust, I built all this just so it hides the underdrive pulley from the V8. Wow. Because on DeLoreans, when you do the LS swaps, you can see the pulley just sitting there spinning. It looks yep. kind of ugly. Yeah. So we just did the X-pipe and got the whole exhaust to cover all that stuff Dude, up. That really finishes the rear so well. Yeah, and then this, is, just this is all cut. So this factory bumper is just cut right there. Okay. So then did you have a chance to dyno this? Not yet, but 5.3 with these turbos should make about six or 700 horsepower. So theoretically, it'd be the fastest DeLorean in the world. Right. But if you try to drive this car with that much boost, it'll twist the chassis like a pretzel. Yeah, because it's six times the amount of power that it made to the wheels. Yeah, it was 130 from the factory. Which to means- To the flywheel. To the flywheel, which means it's less than like 100 80? probably. Yeah, 80. <laughs> <laughs> 80 or 90? Yeah. Okay. So to answer your question about the original, I bought three more cars since I've owned this one. Mm -hmm. And I have one that's all original, all original fuel injection, just nothing done to it, and it was so slow, it was scary. Like, you couldn't even get out of your own way, it's so slow. Yeah. And um, so, being able to go back and forth between the two was very interesting. So then, uh, tell me about the taillights. This is so neat. What a this, crazy... This was a challenge. So, I told Kai that I wanted to do a reverse grid pattern, and to draw that's easy, but to make it is another thing. So, what we ended up doing was this, this is a solid block of acrylic glass. So router tables cut out like basically like boat decking 
They also can cut acrylic glass. So we designed the whole thing in CAD, routed it all out, and then routed the backside a channel to be able to put the light, LED light again. And Steve from Skeptic Innovations did all the lighting for the back and the front of the car in order to accomplish what we wanted. It looks so futuristic, I love it. That was one of those things, it's like, I don't want to fake it. We have to figure out how to do it. Yeah, it looks so good. And then, so th is this like a replica movie license plate? That's that a you replica from Back to Future 2. Got yeah, it. Which is, out of the three movies, that's my favorite movie. I, I really like that you, you pay tribute to that. Yeah. A, a little bit on the car, but it's not like you have the whole, no. you know, yeah. fusion, exactly. whatever. Exactly, yep. The, that Mr. We have no Fusion. Flux capacitor. Yeah, flux capacitor. No. You don't have any of that. So yeah. then let's talk about the interior here. Yeah, it's pretty, um, I mean, I really like the original 80s feel. I mean, I could have made a whole new center console and went nuts making all new interiors. But the only thing I really paid attention to was making sure my airlift uh, controller had a nice spot. All right, so then this is in the airlift booth, which means this does have air suspension on it, and it that's does. why it sits so nice. Yeah, it's got the full Builder Series shocks. We developed it for the car. It's a full bolt-on system. So the only thing I really had to modify is the front lower control arms. Builder Series shocks are completely just installed right on the car. So if anyone thinks they can not do it, if you can do it on DeLorean, you can do it on anything. So then what transmission is in this thing? So it's a Porsche G96 out of a 911 Carrera, early 2000s. Okay. And since a lot of those guys are LS swapping those cars, when the motors pop, it was easy to find an adapter plate. Nice. So I just pretty much off the shelf parts after that was all situated. It was just a matter of making a transmission mount and motor mounts. And so it's using like 911, like all of yeah. the um, cables and everything? Yep, yep. Oh, okay. I upgraded the cables to like the, you know, the more modern aftermarket ones right. that are a little tighter. Yeah. But the shifter itself is straight out of a 911. That is so cool. Then we have our Restomod Air AC controls, which are very cyberpunk, the way they're reverse lit like that. This has air conditioning? Not functional yet, uh -huh. but we have all the controls and all the systems in place. Got it, yep. okay. It's kind of hard to not have a DeLorean without AC because the windows don't roll down. Oh. You just have the little letterbox windows. Right, right, right. And then we have the Haltech IC7 display mm -hmm. to give it that little cyberpunk flavor. Is it running on a Haltech standalone system? Yeah, we got the Nexus R5 right there. Oh, okay. And all right, actually, so that's your flux capacitor. Yeah, that's why that's, I put it there. That, I love that. <laughs> yeah, I wanted to put it on display. That is super cool. And that's controlling the whole car. So air ride, lights, everything is all in one unit, which is everything. pretty cool from Haltech to do that. That's great. Yeah. I love the, the upholstery too. You're updating the interior a little bit. Yeah, yeah, um, it's all rosé. Including the doors, you guys did the doors too. Yeah, that's yeah, that really rosé interior was like more of like a Miami Vice throwback. Uh, it's kind of cool. So what's in the front? So, again, just keep it simple. Oh, wow. That's really neat. Yeah. So this it's, is the air management system and then their flow tank. This is like a 28-inch flow tank. And then underneath here is some relays for the fuel pumps and for the blinkers and stuff like that. It's really nice and finished, though. Yeah, this it's was actually, clean. we redid all of this finish and kind of changed the color of it. Original DeLoreans are like kind of like a glossy, and the the orange peel on the paint is really bad because they mm. were like rushing the cars back in the day. Yeah. So it's kind of like a give and take trying to modernize everything. That's a little bit of storage room. You could probably put like two backpacks, like yeah. two small backpacks. <laughs> Originally, the car was actually supposed to have a back seat, and that's why there's that luggage rack there. And then at the last minute, they nixed it. Back seat. Back seat. Yeah. People, Just like a 944. Right. Like, there's no way. Yeah. Even <laughs> children. We, yeah. yeah <laughs> exactly. Have a hard time fitting back there. Yeah. Um, let's let's uh, finish up with the wheel, tire, all that yeah. stuff. The wheel combo. This is insane. Yep. So, um, Skoll was, in my opinion, one of the only companies that were building these really cool retro 80s style wheels that I really liked. And... Um, I approached them with the idea for the project. They helped out. We did uh, 18 by 12, three-piece SK-17 in the rear, and a 17 by 10 SK-17 in the front. The front is a zero offset, and the rear is a negative 36. Jeez. With Toyo R888R tires in the back and the front. So the front's a 40 series, and the rear is a 35 series. And they just, they're some of the most aggressive tires on the market and I just love the tread pattern. It just works perfect like from that angle where you can just see the, the, the tires kind of poking out and it just rounds the build out really nice. 
So then the, this begs the question, what do other DeLorean fanatics think about what you're doing with these? I'm blown away at the reception the car's gotten this year. I expected people to show up with pitchforks and, and fire, but uh, they all love it, man. Like it's, it's really been a lot of love from people. I mean, you get every once in a while somebody that's like, you ruin the car, but the majority of people love the car. And, and to me, that's kind of half the battle. Because when you own one of these cars, you're like an ambassador to their childhood. So when they see the car, they see Back to the Future and you just gotta let them enjoy the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what's interesting to me is that uh, you've made it actually special and extraordinary versus this car just could have rotted away somewhere because it did get in an impact, right? Yeah, it was and crashed. It, who knows, maybe nobody would have put in the money to actually restore it to its former glory. Exactly. Instead, what you've done is you've given a second life and a better life, Yeah. honestly. You are actually getting more eyes on this chassis that potentially could save more of these cars in the future. I mean, that's the hope. I have five cars right now. My company, Mosseri Autocraft, that I just formed, I'm focusing on 80s and 90s oh, cars. Yeah. Uh -huh. And um, this is just kind of our show car for the public. But, you know, we plan on building more of these cars for select clientele that loves 80s and 90s cars and built out to their specs as wild or as mild as they want. Mm. And this is kind of just that showpiece to be able to do that. It is It is the Radwood era. It's the Rad era. I do. I, I love that era. Yeah. So I think 80s and 90s were the coolest cars ever, you know, especially yeah. from the Japanese influence. Those cars are amazing. And the DeLorean to me is just another piece of that puzzle that really just wasn't explored. SEMA is all about, you know, ingenuity and bringing out something new. And you just don't see a lot of these cars built. So. Awesome. Thank you so much. I appreciate the time, yeah, man. Yeah. I really appreciate, appreciate you. it. Hey, thanks for watching. If you want to support us directly, go to LarryChenPrints.com. I print and sign every single one of these. This is the perfect gift or it's the perfect piece of art for your wall.